Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss a very significant aspect of Sir Philip Sidney. This is a um, topic which is there in your paper number English 7, Unit 3, in which you will find that three writers are there, Sidney, Shelley and Arnold. And we are going to discuss the critical aspect of uh, uh, I mean, their essays on which they are talking about the uh, criticism of poetry. So this is a debate and how this debate is going on and what are the issues which these three writers are discussing. I am only speaking today. It's a kind of introductory lecture and in which you will find that there are certain significant aspects I'm trying to give you. First of all, let us understand what is the time period of these three writers. So we have to arrange them in hierarchy. Okay, then only we will understand how the debate has started and who has uh, given uh, the initial points and the discussion and how the debate is going on. So first of all, let me talk about Philip Sidney. Uh, he's considered as Elizabethan a writer also. And his time period is approximately, I'm telling, because the time period is 1580. Okay, uh, 1580 is the time period when this uh, apology for poetry is written. So you remember this fact. After that, in this sequel, uh, next writer comes, that is P.B. Shali. The time period for P.B. Shali is 1772 uh, or uh, 1792 to 1822. And the third writer which we see, that is Matthew Arnold. Arnold's time period is 1822 to 1888. So that is what we have to understand how this, uh, the, the first writer, because these three writers are in your syllabus, MA English, uh, uh, second semester, uh, Delhi University, Department of English. So let's understand these three writers, uh, Philip Sidney, P.B. Shelley, and Matthew Arnold. And after uh, this, then let's come to our concern for today is only Apology for Poetry, okay, which is written by uh, Philip Sidney. And what are the arguments he's giving? So the first point, let me give you, that is, what happened actually, this is the initial point I'm starting, but the debate is very long. I mean, you know, the debate is from Plato, Aristotle time. So that we will discuss later on. Let me first come to the point. The first point is uh, how this old debate started. You know how this trigger point is there. And this trigger point is in 1580. Okay. In 1580, one writer is there. That is Stephen Goson. G-O-S-S-O-N. Stephen Goson. He wrote a pamphlet. And the title of the pamphlet was School of Abuse. Okay. Again, I repeat the fact. The fact is 1580, Stephen Gosson, he wrote one pamphlet and the title of the pamphlet was School of Abuse. And he dedicated this pamphlet to Philip Sidney. And what is there? In this uh, pamphlet, he is actually uh, saying that, uh, you know, he is blaming poetry. And he is blaming poetry that because of the poetry, uh, the society is being, uh, the society is being corrupt. Okay, so that is how this whole debate started. You know, school of abuse, this poetry, he is making poetry responsible for the abuse of the society. And there are many negative aspects of the poetry he is uh, discussing in that. So that is what this trigger point is here. Uh, Stephen Gosson, Gosson, 1580, he wrote a one pamphlet, School of Abuse, and this pamphlet was dedicated to Philip Sidney. Now, what Philip Sidney is saying in Apology for Poetry, we will discuss, but let me come to the first point, and that is what, how this, what Plato talks about, because Plato, you know, we know he's a philosopher, and most of the ideas and all, we are starting from Plato, especially for English literature. So, Plato uh, defines poetry as untrustworthy. And Plato says poetry is untrustworthy. And then he, because, you know, during his time, and 
some point of time he actually advocated that poetry must be banned from the society because you know during that time if you see during plato's time the time period is war you know warrior uh, uh, the warrior class is there everywhere the society is trying to be very uh, macho so uh, the society in this uh, uh, this this war oriented society if the literature and the poetry is being introduced then it it somewhere brings to the uh, lack of the discipline to the society so that is why plato advocated that poetry must be banned from the uh, state so at least people can be disciplined that's what he is saying poetry is untrustworthy and that's why he is advocating philosophers and he give lot uh, i mean uh, you know big value to philosophers plato's a disciple aristotle is there and aristotle called poetry as a mimicry or a imitation so these are the significant points you need to remember plato is discarding poetry aristotle is also saying it is a mimicry or it is a imitation so and further uh, this debate is if we just go those those are the writers you know following writers who are supporting uh, plato they are believing in the ideology of plato and aristotle definitely they will say that poetry is not such a wonderful yana and it is not a wonderful art but the debate which is being uh, altered almost the, is by philip sidney and philip sidney is giving absolutely different ideas so this is how the whole introduction is there now let me come to the point where we can say that i mean what he is saying what is saying what is there in this article we will talk later on let me come to some other aspects okay so when i was talking about stephen gosson and 1580 that pamphlet where he is uh, saying uh, i mean school of abuse in which he is is dedicating poetry he is talking about poetry and he says that poetry is the mother of lies okay poetry is the mother of all lies and uh, that these are the significant points which uh, philip sidney couldn't take easily and that is why he uh, thought of giving reply and here i will give you one example and that one example is very significant because you know uh, this example i have taken from the the syllabus which is there in your fourth semester right now you are in second semester uh, english but when you are coming to the fourth semester you will be having one core paper that is dalit studies in charmila rege this book you have to study and the title of this book is uh, against the madness of manu and in this book page number 77 sharmila rege is talking you know why i am giving this reference to you so you can actually remember that what we are studying is interrelated so uh, the next example which i am giving is giving from this book which is in your fourth semester and the example which i am trying to give you how this debate is all taking and how the question answer session is going on so in this book you see page number 77 and the title of the chapter is caste in india their mechanism genesis and development in this article uh, in this chapter charmila regi is talking about the rise and fall of hindu women so here this is the book okay rise and fall of hindu women and uh, this is written by ambedkar okay because in camera you are looking it's it's looking uh, in a uh, you know opposite way but this is rise and fall of hindu women and it is written by ambedkar let me give you the little history about this how this this article came in existence and why this article is here a significant for this text and how this text is significant right now we are which is available on online and it is from the e pathshala which is an apology for poetry uh, this you can find out and it is a very simple brief summary about your article so now let me come to the point and the main point is uh i'm comparing this debate which is there from plato to aristotle to philip sidney to shelley to arnold and how this debate is going and changing its uh, subject so the example which i'm giving is in 21st january 1950 okay in 21st january 1950 here uh in the journal of the mahabodhi for march 1950 there appeared an article on the 
position of women in hinduism and buddhism by lama govinda before we come to lama govinda let me start here in an article published in eve's weekly okay remember the uh, the 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 magazine or the paper's name is eve's weekly the time period is 21st january 1950 in an article published in the eve's weekly 21st january 1950 under the title our new republic so these facts you have to remember 21st january eve's weekly and uh, 21st january 1950 eve's weekly and the title is our new republic a hindu writer accused the buddha of having prejudices against women and asserted that the buddhist theory thrust women into the background this uh, this mischievous view was re repudiated by lama angarika govinda a german buddhist monk who had made uh, india his home in a rejoinder to the said article in march 1950 issue of mahabodhi journal of calcutta dr baba saheb ambedkar who was then minister of law in the nehru cabinet felt so strong about the matter that he made an exhaustive study of the position of women in india and later published his findings in an article in may uh, in may june 1952 issue of mahabodhi journal to show that it was not the buddha but banu who was responsible for the fall of hindu women the buddha on the contrary endeavors to enable the woman and to raise her to the level of man the 1952 article of dr ambedkar on the rise and fall of the hindu women is reprinted here for wider circulation and rejoinder of lama govinda titled the position of women in hinduism and buddhism so how this mischievous started the mischief started from 21 january 1950 the newspaper is our uh, you know eve's weekly in which one article published our new republic in under this one writer is accusing buddhism for the downfall of women when this article published lama govinda who was a german monk and who was residing in india he thought of replying it so he replied it on at uh, one uh, he replied it on the mahabodhi uh, mahabodhi journal and he replied it in march 1950 so in 21st january the article published and the march 1950 lama anga angarika govinda replied it but after that when uh, dr ambedkar read it this debate then he felt it so strong that he couldn't control himself and finally he thought of reply and in this uh, reply he this uh, you know this 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 article rise and fall of hindu women emerged so uh, that's what we have to understand how this debate is going on and uh, then uh, uh, ambedkar wrote it thoroughly there are a lot of wonderful examples are there and one very special exclusively dedicated video i have already made in my, uh, my youtube channel so you, when you go and see the title rise and fall of hindu women there you will find this complete book is booklet is discussed why you need to go for that video because this book this booklet is so significant and ultimately it is in your syllabus page number 77 and this against the madness of manu and that you have to study in semester 4 that is why you need to go there and study so in this way this debate you will understand and why i brought this debate into uh, light here because uh, you know uh, here also the debate is going about poetry and what now uh, what aristotle said aristotle uh, plato is against poetry aristotle is against poetry and but philip sidney is taking a different turn and then he is saying what are, what are his ideas lay i am just giving on a simple simplified ideas i am trying to give you okay what is that philip sidney says poetry is of three kinds religious poetry which is primarily an imitation philosophical poetry and imaginative poetry he puts poetry in a three uh, uh, category okay and then he says that poetry brings reason and the another example he gives that all the religious text okay all the religious text of the world they are in a poetic form so poetry is not something which you can disassociate it with, associate with human beings poetry is very much associated with humans because you know uh, we as a human being we are emotional we are imaginative 
and we we want to believe in something and we want to create new thing so here uh, sydney is saying that you know if you compare nature with poetry then you will see that nature is something very realistic and if you compare poetry with history then he says that history is realistic okay whatever like this book is there it's whatever you just see and you just see whatever it is but we cannot improve it we cannot change it we cannot improvise it but in this reality maybe if the reality is crude and maybe the reality is very uh, i mean very uh, very difficult to digest then we have to create some kind of hope imagination and some kind of uh, i mean you know next thing to do so that issue is brought by poetry and this apology for poetry was written in 1500 ad and i have already given you the background of stephen gosset uh philip sidney says that poetry creates poetry creates separate reality poetry awakens the mind okay so poetry awakens the mind poetry poetry creates separate reality and as wordsworth says uh, wordsworth says about poetry that it's a spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling okay and uh, 